Good morning. Good morning. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ as we hear uh, for worship on Palm Sunday. You know, there's a legend in Baltimore about the Palm Sunday at snow, right? You know that? Back in the early 40s sometime. 42. And they met 43, and they measured how deep the snow was by how far it came up those marble steps in our neighborhood. It's almost cold enough to snow today. Huh? So, yeah, yeah. But nevertheless, we carry on the tradition of Palm Sunday and make palm available to us today to proceed to us as you leave and to say that we are with those who shout Hosanna. Welcome to our Lord as he brings into our lives his life of goodness, glory, compassion, and peace. But let me also remind you that palm not only looks backwards, but it also looks forward. If you read the book of Revelation where John lays out this great vision of the life we have in store for us. He says in the seventh chapter, the ninth verse, he says, there's a great multitude of people standing before the throne of God. They are the saved of the earth, a countless number of the faithful who are there. And guess what they have in their hands? Palm, palm branches. And they cry out to God, great is our God, Behold the one who is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. Amen? Amen. So when you grab your palm today, not, know that you not only hold the history in your hand to remember the palms of that Sunday thousands of years ago, but you hold the palm of victory in your hand, the palm we were all hold as we gather around the throne of God in glory. Amen? Remind us that today also, as you uh, came in, you received an envelope, I'm sure, and on it it says determination of giving. We've been talking about stewardship and reminding ourselves that giving is an act of grace of God. It's also a demonstration of our unity of a church. And so today we will assign on that slip of paper what is our determination of giving for this year in order that we may say to our God, this is us, we gather here in order to praise your name and to affirm ourselves as a part of your great church now and in glory. Amen. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our worship leader for this morning is Phyllis Martin and she will share with us the announcements of the day. Good morning, it's so good to see all of you here today. Um, today, uh, is, uh, like I said, this Palm Sunday, I wish I could be here next Sunday with you because next Sunday is our Easter weekend with so many wonderful exercises. Um, but uh, I will be visiting with my parents, which is also a great endeavor, so I'll be thinking of you um, while I'm with them. So, we have a lot of things going on. Uh, the uh, women of the United Methodists will be uh, meeting Monday, April the 11th at 11.30 a.m. So you can plan on that. It's been a, a little while since we got together. So that'll be the second Monday in uh, April, which is the 11th. Uh, on April the 24th, we're thinking down the road, uh, but we're going to, we're planning to have a meeting of those of us who count the offerings on Sunday morning. Lee Rockenbaugh has requested that we meet on Sunday, the 24th after services. Uh, we'll be reminding you again as we move down the line. Uh, don't forget that we also have uh, our Tuesday evening services, uh, excuse me, studies of the Lord's Prayer. Many of us have been uh, uh, enriched by that opportunity to study the Lord's Prayer and to uh, repeat the Lord's Prayer three times every day to, to drill in that extra meaning that we are now gathering from, uh, from God's request that we pray this prayer. So that will be Tuesday at 7 o'clock in our new gathering room that we have opened up um, just down the hall. Um, we're moving forward. We have a, a Holy Land report that we're putting together for this evening. And we would love to have you come join us at 5 o'clock tonight. Uh, we're going to be uh, sharing a, a, a brief meal. We'll be sharing stories and pictures and, and 
uh, some of the things that we brought back from our Holy Land tour. So uh, it's, it's a good time for us who uh, went on the tour to regather and reflect, but we would really like to share that with you all and uh, your friends and uh, anyone who wishes to come. And it'll be five o'clock this evening. We have uh, coming up our Good Friday service is going to be on April the 15th, which is next Friday at seven o'clock. Um, so that's our Good Friday service, seven o'clock p.m. on the 15th. And then we have a sunrise service scheduled for Easter morning at 6.30 a.m. And those are always very special. So uh, plan as you can. So the sunrise service uh, Easter morning will be at Loudoun Park Cemetery, uh, just as a, as a note there. So we extend our welcome to uh, everyone here and especially to those of you who are gathering with us uh, uh, in, in the virtual world. Um, we always happy at, at, at to have you with us and your family and your friends. You're always welcome to join us at 1015 on Sunday mornings um, at any time, especially next Sunday with the Easter Sunday services, those that are shown in the announcements and then 1015 Sunday morning is our Easter service here. So uh, you are more, more than welcome to your, your family, your friends, please come join us. There's no telling what kind of things can come together with our gathering. So let us now pass the peace among each other. The peace be with you. And also with you. Share the peace with those around us and with those online. Very good. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Sing together, he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. <laughs>
holy city of Jerusalem, and was proclaimed king of those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we may bear them in his name. May ever hail him as our Lord, and follow him in the way that leads through the walls that divide us into the world of reconciliation and peace that he offers us and the eternal life he brings. In his name we pray. Amen. And with the children and the crowds, we join together in singing Hosanna, loud Hosanna.
our call to confession. It is sad, but we sometimes welcome the Lord and then walk right away from Him when He comes. We need to throw down our old coats and let Him walk over them to lead us to a new life. While we say, Hosanna, let us also say, I repent. Let's take now a moment of silent prayer and confession. Join me now in our unison prayer of confession. Gracious and wonderful God, on this day of Palm Sunday, for confessions and shouts of hosannas, we join the joyful celebration of the coming of your Son into the center of our lives. As we turn our eyes to the one you have sent, we know our lives are still falling short of the glory he brings. In the light of his love, we see the darkness of our sinfulness. In the glory of his presence, we find the hope of our forgiveness. Save us, we pray. By the power of Jesus' love, let our sins be forgiven. Let our brokenness be healed. And let our distracted vision be directed back to the lowly form of the one who comes humbly riding on a donkey to be our Lord. Amen. I think we might surely let these palms represent the presence of the Lord in our gathering here today. Amen? Amen? He is here. He is among us. Not only that, but it is God's intention that he be here and among us. And that we know that. Jesus did not sneak in to Jerusalem. <laughs> Jesus boldly walked into Jerusalem with his followers loudly proclaiming he is here. So in his presence, let us offer our prayers to the Lord, our thanks to God, and our petitions to God, come, save us, heal, comfort, strengthen, and guide. Some petitions already given us, and Bobby will share them with us now, and then opportunity for us all to offer our prayers. We offer Palm Sunday greetings to all. It's, it's a delight to be able to be together today to share the service together. Um, some of our joys also are, are uh, that our church secretary, Peggy, has recovered from COVID and we're glad to see her back. We do have some concerns. Um, Tar, uh, Doris Talbot, she is a friend of uh, Phyllis Bonnets, and we know that she had to... Um, have a test. She had that test and she is uh, hopeful to get the test results tomorrow so we certainly do offer her comfort and peace as she's waiting for those test results. Does anyone else have any joys or concerns to share? Yeah, Sandy. Before we take a look over, Jack, take a visit from Pennsylvania today. Absolutely. Great Donovan. Amen. Um, for the, and it's good to have Larry here. I just want to, Larry goes through a lot of tests. You have no idea what his week is. <laughs> and we're just happy to have, have you here. Larry says he's hanging in there, but Lord, uh, but Larry, we want to know we uh, give you our support uh, in all that you are uh, going through in tests and treatments and medications. So forth. Others? Uh, yeah. Um, Sharon? Um, still keep Carol in your prayers. I text her. And she said that, um, you know, she's down there taking care of her mom, and her mom is, is still really sick. I think she, she's always in hospice, and she's taking care of her. And she was saying that people in her family are, um, you know, getting tests for cancer and biopsy. And she said that she sounds very depressed. She says it's been a horrible week, and she said that uh, she's just, she 
only seen family. Yeah. Okay, this has been a long time. It's been, you know, not a long time, but it's been with Mike and now with us. So she really, I know she's not yeah. seeing friends or anything. She just it's seen just family. Tough time. Let's keep Carol in our prayers and be well. And those are Donna? Yeah, praise. Um, my friend's friend Rob, he had a liver transplant Wednesday. Yeah. And everything went very well. Good. He's doing really well. Um, keep them in prayer, though. His daughter had, she's always been healthy, never had an issue. And she's had some allergic reactions to the pain medications they've tried to give her. So, um, so father's you. doing much better than daughter, and he's yeah. a little upset because she's done this for yeah. him and yeah. she's having a hard time. Yeah. So keep them both in prayer. And so what's her name? I, I'm not okay. sure. Rob Star. We keep yeah. Rob Star in prayer. She's a donor. She's the donor. She's the donor. She's the donor. Um, and that liver transplant is successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need his healing and uh, be with uh, his daughter as she uh, recovers from the reaction to the medicine she's given. Yeah. Uh, my very old friend of mine, uh, Greg Gouncher's daughter, she was born premature. She's in her mid to late twenties now, but she's had a lot of, of health issues. Her name? Uh, Claire. Claire. Let's keep uh, Claire. Claire Gantry. Uh, yeah, and with a lot of health issues. Yeah. 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 My sister that. Peggy from Texas. Well, well you get it. the further stuff from <laughs> which you can <laughs> be here for the award. Yeah, you get two. She left <laughs> Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> right. Great to have you. Great to have you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's just keep Jean in our, our prayers yeah. as she travels through. Yeah. Keep, we continue to keep Jean in our prayers as she travels through Florida uh, looking for a house. Yeah. yeah. And also hoping uh, to find uh, strength as she goes through that process. Let us continue to keep the people of uh, Ukraine in our prayers. Their situation um, uh, deteriorates constantly, and we just pray strength for all of them and pray that uh, uh, the Lord will uh, guide the way to peace and, uh, and protect those who are seeking to flee from all that is being rained down upon them. Let us pray. Prince of Peace, God of glory, Magnificent One, who shares your magnificence with us. Compassionate One, who wants to touch each and every one of us with your compassion and with your mercy and with your goodness and strength. Make us now fully aware of your presence. Let's just drink in your spirit and know that it is good. Let us just know that your goodness is that upon which we can depend every day. We uh, thank you, Lord. We thank you on this day that your son, under your direction, with your leadership, was bold enough to come into this world and suffer the consequences for our sake. We thank you and we praise you and we wish to live by the benefits of his love. Give your power, Lord, your healing power to those whom we have mentioned here today. All the wonders of transplants, of liver from one body to another, and we thank you for that. And now we ask you to give healing for both the donor and the one who received it, that their lives may recover, be strong, and go on to the fullness of life. For others, Lord, who go through treatments, be with them. We ask you, Lord, for those who have... Uh, the burden of others upon them for those caretakers that you may give them your strength and your goodness. We thank you, Lord. We thank you because we know there is comfort with you. We know that we do not have to feel ourselves alone with you because you are there constantly being our guide, being our strength, and being our comfort. Ah, Lord, we give you thanks because of your presence in the world. And we pray you might touch many lives with your healing with your strength, with your comfort. We look to you, Lord, for peace. Peace in our time. That war may end and that rebuilding might come and that safety and security may be given to all. We pray, Lord, for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. We pray our prayers in the name of Jesus and would say as he taught us, Alpha, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
I came to come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
began to overwhelm his life. And so we share these verses from the 22nd and 23rd chapters of Luke. It is a long reading, um, but it tells the unfolding events that lead us to Good Friday and the cross. And so I invite you to stand as Phyllis and Bobby and I share with you these words. As we see the shouts of Hosanna turn to the cries of crucify. Beginning Luke chapter 22, verse 39. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest, cut off his ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were abandoned when I was with you day after day in the temple? You did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man was also with him, but he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Men, I do not know what you are talking about. And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. 
Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. When he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, even Herod with his soldiers treating him with contempt and mocking him. And he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. The same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other before they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, and leaders, and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I therefore will have him flogged and release him. And they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had been taken in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urging, demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Syrian, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we see you. It was a long time standing. There's even more words that could be read. Someday for a Lent and our Bible study, we'll study all those scriptures. There's much to be said. But I just wish to present one thought. Another sign of Palm Sunday is this stone. Right? You know that the Pharisees and others came up to Jesus at the high point of the procession and said to him, tell your followers to be quiet. You're all too noisy. Tell them not to shout out so loud. Tell them not to tell everybody about your miracles. Tell them not to tell people that you are the Messiah. Jesus responds, I tell you, don't you love that word? I tell you. Pharisees telling Jesus what to do? No, Jesus says, I tell you. And he says in excuse, permission, um, praise of his disciples that are crying out. He says, I tell you, if they didn't cry out, the stones will cry out. Because what is happening here today is of God and is of goodness. The stones will cry out, he said. Where do you get that, Jesus? The stones will cry out. 
Jesus is a student of Isaiah, the prophet. And Isaiah, the prophet, in his 40th chapter, talks about what a grand day it is going to be when God comes to save his people. In that chapter, it has to do with bringing them back from exile. That is, putting them back to life. No longer people captive, but people set free by the power of God. Huh? Valleys of despair lifted, mountains of inequality lowered, and a plain place where all live in peace and security provided by God's coming. And the word then is cry out, cry out. And the response at first is, what shall I cry? But then the cry that is given to them, I shall cry out, here is God and God's love prevails forever and ever. God's word stands forever. For that, Jesus responds, the stones will cry out, because what is happening here is of God. But what I find interesting, and I'm sure you do too, is that come the events that we just read in Luke, Mark and Matthew, John have similar words. No one speaks up for Jesus. No one. It begins with the disciples and Jesus at his meal makes them a part of the kingdom and prays that they will not enter into temptation, but they fall asleep. Peter, who he prays particularly for, denies him. No one stands up for Jesus. The guards mock him. Yeah. The council, the Sanhedrin, brings nothing but complaints against him. Was nobody standing around that could say he may stir up the people, but he also heals the people. Brings hope. Brings sight. Brings a new spirit to people. No one stood up for him. The council, the elders, the scribes, the teachers of the law find him guilty with no testimony for the defense. What kind of trial is this? What kind of people is this? That no one would stand up for Jesus. They take him to Pilate, but they go with him to Pilate and counter any thought that this man could be considered a good person with all their heaping on of blame and accusation. Pilate sends him to Herod. You know what Herod does. Herod just fools with him, right? You know the song from Jesus Christ Superstar? Prove to me that you're no fool. Walk across my swimming pool. He just messes with him and sends him back to Pilate. Pilate, who could have done something, yields to the people. And remember the words. And all of them cried out, crucify him. Was there nobody in the crowd whom he healed that could raise their hand and say, wait a minute. This man can heal us. Why do you want to kill him? Was there no one in the crowd that said, isn't it time for us to stop talking about killing people and start talking about saving people? But no one raised a word for him. No one. Have you ever been in crowds where that happens? Stuff is bad that's going on. And nobody speaks up. It's like that for Jesus that day until finally at the end of it all, he stands alone, all by himself. Jesus walked this lonesome valley. He had to walk it by himself. And there he stands with that crown of thorns, crown of thorns on his head, right? And a cross on his shoulder. The only righteous one left. In all the earth, Jesus, the only righteous one, left and stands there as testimony to Paul's words in Romans 3.23. Check Lee's pen. He's got a pen. That, you have to see Lee's pen. He's got a pen that on his soul and reads precious words from Scripture. And the first one there is, you know what it is? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Except for one whose name is Jesus. And our only association is with thy crowd. Our only hope is in the name of the righteous one who goes to the cross for us. Amen? Goodness is this. Can we 
see from here to Easter? And at last, a stone cries out for Jesus. You know what stone it is? It's the rolling stone. And I do not mean Mike Jagger. <laughs> it's the rolling stone, the stone that rolled away from the tomb. Ah, at which moment, all the sinners of the world are going to change to the forgiven. As the word of Jesus from the cross, Father, forgive them. Sometimes we think it just pertains to the soldiers, those nasty ones that nail the nails. It doesn't. It pertains to every last person living in Jerusalem at that time because nobody raised a word in support of him. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them all. Me and you, forgive them all. And Luke says, from that time on, from the time that stone rolled away from the tomb, repentance and forgiveness is preached across the earth. The only righteous one stands for us. He just asks us to stand for him. Amen? Amen. Lord, we give you thanks. The one who is bold enough to stand against the whole world and be righteous, be loving, be compassionate, be peace-giving, be freedom-yielding for us. And Lord, we we, your people, understand. And with repentance in our heart, we would stand for him. Help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is that we do for stewardship this year, in this moment. We have been talking about stewardship for three weeks now. <laughs> in brief words, affirming that it is by grace that we give, and by trusting God's grace, we know that the Lord will supply our every need. And as Paul says, make us fully capable of being generous in our giving. St. Paul leads us forward. He says, know that when we give, it affirms our unity. It also enables us to do wonderful things in the name of Jesus. Make our contributions to the relief of those who suffered natural disasters as the offerings that we take. And you know, the other things that we seek to do, providing sandwiches for many in, in Baltimore, among the homeless population, providing shoeboxes for children all over the world, looking to provide boxes of cereal every week. We make our donations to the Lord. So here today, we ask that we would all join together in saying to the Lord what it is that we will do in our determination of giving for the coming year. St. Paul says that each person determine what from what they have they will give to the Lord. And we call upon us to do that today. You were given an envelope with a slip of paper in it as uh, you entered today. On that slip there is a place to write an amount. You can write that amount for a week, a month, a year, whatever it is you wish. That is between you and the Lord. The only person who will ever see that is our chief financial secretary. He'll look it over, total it up, so that our financial people will know how much we had to work with in the coming year. Amen? And then we build from there. St. Paul also says an interesting thing. He says, what you give will be entrusted to people who have been found appropriate and strong and trusted among us. We have that same assurance. This church has a wonderful group of people that look after our finances. Our treasurer, our treasurer Lee is a treasure. It's neat to have a treasurer who is a treasure. He spent three hours in the bank on Friday afternoon just working out how we can best use our account. And he does that regularly. We have other persons who look after our, our various other accounts. Joe was a great help with that. He stands ready always to look after our funds to make sure they're managed correctly. We have a wonderful finance committee headed by Diane Bowman who just regularly look after our budget to maintain and to make sure we're doing just the very best we can. There are a core of eight wonderful counters. If you're a counter, would you stand up? You can, you don't get enough credit. Because what happens is, after a service, these persons who work in teams of two go hide themselves in a room somewhere. 
and tally up uh, the offering that has been made for this day to see that it goes to the right places. Let us thank them for their work. <laughs> we're having a meeting on the um, Sunday after Easter after church. If you'd like to volunteer, yep. please stay. Yep. Yep. And we're glad that Linda O'Hara volunteered. Yes, she's going to be with us on the 24th. Yep. Hey, man, it turned into a recruiting tribe. I think that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> we, we are operating well. I just wanted to assure you that when you say this is what I will give to the church, it will be used to the best of our ability to express the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? I want you to take a moment now. Some may not be ready. That's okay. We're going to take the envelopes again next week, too. But some, if you could, just jot down on that paper. It's a very simple thing. Here's what I'll give, Lord. If you want, you can just write a percentage. That's okay, too. But an amount. Week, month, year, whatever. Whatever speaks for you, this is what I'll give, Lord. Put your name, hold it up, put it back in the envelope. Lord, we thank you that you have given us your grace and invited us to be a part of your church, a part of Trinity, a part of the United Methodist Church, a part of the great Christian church, a part of the church of all who believe in you seek to serve you with our hearts and to stand toward you wherever we are. We pray you bless us as we one by one all together say to you, Lord, this is, this is what I will do. Just make a note of it. And it's just, Lord, for us and you to know. It is for us to follow. No one's going to bill us for this. It is for us to have in our hearts to say this is what we will do. And Lord, we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. I think you also got a pen, right? Along with your, yeah, the pen is a free gift. We give you that. Take that pen with you. But the envelope... As you complete filling that out, would you bring it and present it here? Plate? I'll get it out of the way, so I'm not the one to give it to. But if you just bring it up and put it in the plate at this time. same plate will be at the door um, in the following weeks and we'll receive other cards at that time. Say, Lord, this is us saying, we are with you. We are your people. We want good things to be done through your church. And we offer these determinations of giving to say, this is what we shall do. Each of us and all of us together. In Jesus' name, amen. And may it be. We turn the words crucified back to the words of Hosea.
Hosanna because we stand with him. Let us join together in singing our praise to God through the doxology.
Lord who sent Jesus to be among us. I trust every day with his love, his peace, and his joy that we may be his people. Standing before him, sharing his love, giving him glory. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you.